both of these boxes talk, um, speak to that a little bit. And this is what we feel also really sets us, sets us apart as an IB uh, division, as an IB community. So the, the IB is asking teachers to engage in reflection and collaboration um, all the time as part of their practice to ensure that we are providing opportunities for students to inquire, um, to help them understand and take ownership of that learning and feel empowered with their own inquiry. Uh, we talked already about how it, we, um, two of the programs are a conceptually driven program and we're going to give some examples of what that can look like in PYP and MYP um, after this slide. And then set in a local and global context, this is this is the, the why is this important to what I'm learning. So if I'm, if I'm learning the what, the, con the concepts, the why is this important to, to me, what connections can I make as a student, and how is it important to my local or my global um, community. So really helping them um, make those connections. And again, focused on collaboration, the IB asks us in the standards and practices uh, to set aside collaborative planning time for teachers. And, and our teachers take advantage of this in uh, reflecting on how they're developing the skills that we're asking students to think about and how they approach their learning, but also on assessment and just their practice in general to make sure that there's opportunity for a broader understanding of, of the concepts. And at the heart of all of it, at the, at the bottom, just like in the middle of the program models, is developing the whole child. So we're not just focused on academic content, but through the approaches to learning skills, we're looking at how is the student um, able to reflect or bounce back um, or collaborate or research or, or think critically, as, as you said earlier. Um, so this is really what, when we start to get down in, from like what, what it all is out here, kind of getting into the nitty gritty. This is what it looks like on a day to day. So I want to ask a question. Um, of uh, all of you. So PYP, MYP, all the teachers are teaching through the IB program. Yes. At the high school, Dan, um, if I'm not teaching an, an, a DP course, is it the expectation though that I'm still using the approaches to teaching and the approaches to learning? So those teachers are MYP t teachers 99.9% .9 of the time. So this is the way they're instructing classes. I would argue that if you don't have a fourth or fifth period that is in the MYP program, you just don't turn off the switch. Uh, and they do collaborate in their uh, departments and their collaborative learning teams, and this is what it's focused on. So I would say yes to that question. I think that's an important message for us to sort of be able to talk about is that even if a student at the high school is not in the DP program, they're still getting the instructional practices, the approaches to teaching, and the approaches to learning, just like a student who was in a diploma program course is, or in an MYP course is. And I think what's essential to making that happen is uh, our master schedule allows for our teachers to have common collaborative planning time. So, so nobody's out there as an island. So then that leads to another question I was gonna ask um, as well on this, which is, with the new standards that are coming up in 2020 and with a continual need for renewal and, and professional development, how are we making sure that the, the teachers who are coming in are constantly getting the latest and constantly getting that time for the, for, for the training that they need and what should we as a board be thinking about to help make that even better? That's a, that's a great question, thank you. Um, we, we do run, uh, for new teachers, we do run an induction uh, program so that they are getting introduced to just what is an IB and then um, diving into what that means for, the, for each specific program. And we try, to, we try to run that thoroughly enough that it would cover what we consider, what we know as like a category one workshop for the IB so that we can kind of cover that in-house and then, this, then the teachers would be ready to go to a category two, which allows them to dive deeper into their practice or um, the program, depending on which workshop they go to. But it is essential that we are sending staff out to PD um, from the different departments. Not every single teacher has to go to all of the same, because the idea is that a teacher or two go to one and they come back and, and help grow their colleagues, and then maybe those colleagues go to a different workshop and 
and do the same when they come back. And also IVMA offers a boot camp. It's happening mm -hmm. September 21st at Robinson Secondary School. It's very, very cheap. Uh, and it is for student, uh, students. It's for teachers just coming into a system, this one or others in the mm -hmm. IB in Atlantic region. And they can go and get a, a professionals who are teaching that course or that particular grade level or that particular theme that there is some, some of the um, courses you can take there are theme based. Uh, and so we do encourage all of our newbies to get over to the boot camp. Uh, I'll say for the diploma program also, we do undergo curriculum changes on a, they say a five-year rotation, though I've seen that vary. Um, I just last March, I sent all of our IB uh, math and all of our diploma teachers and all of our diploma English teachers to Pittsburgh to be trained because the new curriculum just rolled out for teaching starting September 3rd. So, uh, yeah, we keep abreast of that. In terms of the new programs and, and standards and practices, we actually have a plan where we're going to be unpacking that with a core of teachers who will take it back to their collaborative teams. Uh, it will be essential. We all have a good handle on that in about two years when we go through our eval visit. So we're already beginning to unpack those standards in committee starting um, the first week of school, starting next next week. Yeah. Same for, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to, to say we're also running an induction in the, the PYP as well. We have teachers who have already signed up to go to boot camp and we, we track, our, ooh, I'm going to turn you off. We track um, and make sure that our, our teachers are receiving the, the PD that they need. So, so I guess I just challenge a little bit on the, the MYP teachers and, and their exposure to IB. I mean, is, is, so the non-DP students, do they get sort of residual exposure to, to IB or is it intentional? In other words, are we baking the IB approach into every class AP IB no matter what it is at, at George Mason or is it just the the IB approach carries over from the MYP teachers for those particular classes because I would much rather have us trying to sneak in the IB approach to every single class that's offered at the high school if possible. So if the class is a six through uh, grade six through grade 10 class and the classes I can have mixed grades at the high school, but if they're predominantly ninth or predominantly 10th grade, we, that is an IBMYP course. So that does include our AP classes um, are also run as an MYP course. Mm -hmm. what, what about, um, and I just want to, when we talk about equity and closing the gap and the like, mm -hmm. ESOL courses, mm -hmm. special ed courses, things like that, how are those teachers then also, how are our ELT or LEAP teachers at the high school incorporating the elements of IB? So this year we have new EL staff and some new um, special education specialists that are currently in my MYP induction and they've already started like even today they started planning with their with their co-teachers and the, the message the message um, to be sent is that, that this work is done in collaboration with everyone because it is for everyone. And the benefit of having these specialists in the collaborative planning time to the extent that it's possible is that right there in real time they can be looking at the differentiation strategies for support and for extension um, both in the day-to-day -day activities um, and in the building of assessment because they do create common MYP assessments, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but we build those in a way so that they're open-ended enough to allow for student voice and choice as a way to allow students to extend themselves um, or for students who need extra support. So having those teachers involved in that conversation and the planning um, just simply can't be understated. I mean, it, it's, very, it's very powerful, um, and that's, that's our effort in trying to keep keep everybody in the program yeah okay just so just one kind of lawyerly question then so are there any AP courses in 11th or 12th grade that don't have the AP, the IB baked into them uh, AP uh, calculus uh, BC sorry AP calculus BC which is also co-seated not co-seated it's one and the same with IB math HL1 so yes, with the IB piece there. Um, 
kind of think we have we had we got rid of AP stats so we don't have that anymore so that is the only standalone in 11th and 12th grade we do have a new um, AP physics course coming in starting next week uh, and that is also an IB physics teacher uh, he's going to be teaching two separate periods but yes um, so is it fair to say in the uh, BC Calc course that's co-seated with HL is it HL or SL? It's not actually co-seated. It is one in the same class. Yeah. The students in the junior year will take the BC Calculus course for College Board, and in the senior year in HL oh, Math 2, oh. they'll sit for the IB HL oh, okay. exam. So it's a sequence. It's, the IB. They're not co-seated. Okay. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. So can I stop us just for a second? Because yeah. one of the things that I'm hoping will occur sort of organically is you'll start to um, think about what are the policy implications, the governance implications of some of the conversations that you're hearing. So when I, when I listen to what um, these great folks are talking about, there are a couple of things that come up. One is um, common planning time for teachers. Another is professional development. Another is culture. Another is environment. Another is potentially staffing. Um, so, so each of those have impact and influence on operations, but also at the same time, they're budgetary items, they, they do influence governance. So um, I'm hoping that you're, as you're listening to them, that you're thinking, like, what is my, what is my role and how can, I, how can I, through good governance, support the work of IB for all? Does that make sense? Questions, thoughts about that? Yeah. Well, I would also ask, and I don't know what visibility you have to this, but does IB affect how we approach governance? I mean, should we? Do we need to be more reflective? Do we need to do more board self-assessments? I mean, are we going to eat our own cooking on some of this stuff, mm. or is it business as usual? And it's just we happen to have IB. Mm. I, I would think. You know, more of the kind of activity that we're undertaking at this retreat would be in order to really completely walk the IB mm -hmm. walk and talk it as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a good question, and tonight really is about reflection. And one thing that um, we haven't really talked about, but it, it, it's occurring to me as we sit here that the another thing that we uh, have it as a tool that we could bring to bear on this is we do have our advisory committees and if there are things that each of the advisory committees can under their you know, their broad charge why they exist but to have a particular topic in mind about what are the IB issues that affect the area that each of the committees is under we could talk about how to ask questions of them to get their engagement as additional um, sources of advice information and representation I don't know it's just a thought didn't mean to interrupt your flow. No. So just as a just as a time check, how are we? Where are we on? Flow? Yeah. So on right? that yeah. note, we were just having a little private discussion here. We have more stuff. So I think it's important for time. We just go to our last slide and talk about the I, eval visit. Or I think we need to hear. I, I would really like to spend the like. I, I want to make sure we all have the same information. I think it would be really important to hear what you have to say. Okay. Um, tonight and and also because I do think you've you've referenced some of the things that are coming up and that yeah. really sort of got me um, thinking about what it might be okay. I think we're okay okay and I and I think our next chunk really is to is try to write down in a group uh, in, in small groups some of those mm -hmm. what are the good things what could we do well what could we do not so well in governance for our that would support IB for all right yes. and so as we're going on through the rest of things um, you know, we're, we're going to be taking time from that chunk, but we can start be thinking and writing these things down so when we get into our small groups, we're, we're ready to go. So, so build those up. Okay. All right, then. Okay. All righty, then. Unless you have to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I am missing yeah. softball practice tonight with my team, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> I think the fact that we could just go on and on about all of this stuff, and so we're being cognizant of. So. I, I get you. So we we talk about a conceptual and inquiry-based learning, and so we thought it was important to kind of give you an overview. This is taken from our program of inquiry in the primary years program, 
and it kind of is like the big picture of one of the units of study that that we have and it comes from